Good morning, all of you. Good morning, sir. Morning, sir. Let's start with the next topic. Okay, from last time we are continuing with the first order logic, and as all of you know, the first order logic is nothing but the another method for the knowledge representation. The first method we have seen that was regarding the proposition logic, and because of some of the major limitations of the proposition logic we are uh, having the second kind of logic that is the first order logic now if you see the limitations of the proposition logic mainly it was uh, not considering the all the things of the world like as we have seen the world consists of the different kind of objects relations functions relation etc etc but the proposition logic we are uh, is focusing only on the some kind of declarative sentences and some specific kind of facts and to come out of that limitation we have the second kind of logic that is first order logic in the last time already we have seen the syntax semantics and the uh, various kind of uh, symbols connectives being utilized in case of the first order logic and also we have seen the example uh, and the some new kind of symbols which make the proposition uh, which make the first order logic more uh, advantageous as compared with the proposition logic we have seen the quantifiers concept in case of the first order logic in that we have seen the two quantifiers the universal quantifier and the existential quantifiers and related related with that already we have saw the some examples also and some examples already i have given you as a homework also i hope all of you also done that now let's see a next point in the first order logic that is the properties of the quantifiers which are the two quantifiers we have discussed which are the two types of the quantifiers universal quantifier and existential universal quantifiers and the existential quantifiers so quantifiers are just like the some special symbols being utilized in the first order logic okay to represent the knowledge now these are the some common properties of the first order uh, in the first order logic and the properties of the uh, quantifiers we are having here now first property you can see here if there is a all x all y then it is same as all y all x i hope this is understandable yes if there is a something yes, like all x All y, then it is same as a all y, all x. Two marks question can be possible on the properties of the quantifier. Then, if there is a sum x, sum y, then it is also same as sum y, sum x. Okay. Then third property we have sum x, all y, and it is not same as all y, sum x. Okay, this is important to be discussed here. third one if there is a sum x all y now this is not equal to or this is not same as all y sum x now let's see with the example uh, we'll try to prove this okay uh, how it is not uh, equal to okay now suppose there you can see the example okay what example we are having suppose <coughs> we have write the logic like this sum x all y loves x comma y sum x all y loves x comma y now what is the sentence from which sentence this logic is being written yes from which kind of sentence this logic is written this if foil can be written this one as already we have seen from the sentences we can write the logic and if the logic is given from that we can also write the sentence correct now this is logic 
suppose for example this is the logic given that is why sum x all y loves x comma y now from which log from which sentence this logic is being written yes what is the meaning of this logic what is the meaning of first symbol first symbol this one yes all of you can hear me yes sir ha huh. now tell me which from which sentence this logic can be written what is the meaning of this logic What is the meaning of this first symbol? Sum x. Sum x. Second. All y. All y. Now loves is the predicate, and then again we have the x comma y. Now what can be the sentence from which this kind of logic can be written? That is my question. Kutla sentence or unhe logic liyela gila sel. Yes. Sir, third one. Yes. Ah, uh, sum x all y is not same as sum y or all x. You know what I am asking? What is the sentence? For what particular sentence this logic is written? As already last time, what we have seen from sentence we have written the logic. For particular sentence we have written the logic. Correct? Yes, sir. Now. Form from given logic, you also have to form the sentence. Correct. Yes. So sentence niche diya hai na. There is a person who loves everyone in the world. And that is I am asking na. That is I am asking what kind of sentence might be there from which this kind of logic can be written. So even below is given, then also you could not able to tell me. I am asking from the last two minutes. Correct. Yes. Got the sentence? Yes, sir. Yes, Now, sir. what we are trying to prove? We are trying to prove this third sentence. Okay. Now, for example, here we have just for this uh, part, we have written this uh, sentence. Okay. Now we will write these uh, in another way. like if i write these like these here we have written the sum x all y here we have written the all y sum x now what is the meaning of this sentence and what is the difference between these two now what will what sentence will be from the for will form from the this logic just like from this logic we have got this logic is written for this sentence in the similar way you can see this logic is written for this sentence correct yes sir now does the meaning of these two sentences is same no sir no because sentence second logic gives us the sentence like this like here you can see all y sum x loves x comma y means what everyone in the world is loved by at least one person or you can also write in the another way everyone the everyone in the world is loved by some person yes or no yes sir yes so, sir so there is a different meaning of this sentence and this sentence correct these two sentences are the having the same meaning or the different meaning different meaning different meaning different meaning that is the reason yes. this this property so here we have pulled this property correct got this property yes sir so that is yes, here yes, have, that is that is the reason we have written here like sum x all y is not same as all y sum x and that is and uh, <clears throat> the proof or the example for this uh, uh, this particular property is this example you can refer then another important property is related with the quantifier is the quantifier duality 
who okay, a quantifier duality now here what is the quantifier duality you can see each expression can be expressed uh, using some other expression each particular expression can be expressed means what suppose you have you have expressed some or you have represented some sentence using one quantifier then that sentence can be represented using the another quantifier that is the meaning of duality operator by keeping the meaning same let's see all x likes x comma ice cream now you tell me the sentence which will be formed from this logic <clears throat> all of you can able to see this logic yes sir now tell me the what kind of sentence will form from this everyone likes ice cream exactly everyone likes uh, the ev ice cream, ice cream. Or right. all likes the ice cream it can be also yes, possible all correct like ice cream. now what we are trying to say here is this kind of logic can now this logic is written using the which quantifier Universal, universal quantifier. Now, is this possible to write the same logic using the existential quantifier? Can you write the same logic using the existential quantifier? Yes, sir. Yes. What can be it? Uh, the next to it. Uh, uh, it's given here. Like for all x. For all x, we can write the negation of some x. Yes or no? Some x, right? It is. Its meaning is here. Likes. You can write the negation of likes. Correct. Here, likes is written. Here, you can write the negation of likes. Yes, sir. And next part, as it is, these two, these both of these logic are the same, but are represented using the different quantifier. Correct. Yes, sir. And that is called as the quantifier duality. Means what? Each particular quantifier, each quantifier can be expressed using the other quantifier. And that is called as the quantifier duality. Understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Let's see the another example for this. Now see this. What will be the expression for this? What will be the sentence will form from this logic? some x like broccoli x is what person any person you can say some someone likes the broccoli correct yes sir someone is right someone likes the broccoli now yes, is this is it possible to write now this is being written using the existential quantifier now is it possible to write it is in the universal quantifier yes it is being written like this like for some some x we have written the negation of all x this is this this particular logic and this particular logic is same or not same same and another way another next part likes x ya hoje apan ka yanar negation of likes negation of like is nothing but the like yes or no yes sir and this is and for this particular logic this particular uh, Logic being written here using the existential quantifier. Now this can be also written using the universal quantifier, and that that this is nothing but our property that is the quantifier duality. Understood this property? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. Let's see the next part. Now, as in case of the proposition logic, also we have seen the uh, inferences in the case of the proposition logic. Same here also we are having the inferences in case of the FOL. or the inferences in case of the first order logic now already we have discussed the what do we mean by the inference concept of the inference is nothing but what inference in the fol is nothing but the getting the some new facts from the old facts or getting the some new sentence from the existing sentences okay now for that we have some rules now uh, before we understand some rules or the inference rules related to the fol first we understand some uh, some basic terminologies simple basic terminologies uh, in that we have the first basic terminology that is the substitution now all of you must be aware of the concept of the substitution okay so 
substitution is the fundamental operation performed in the terms and the formula what is being termed that already last lecture we have discussed uh, if you want to write the fol it's uh, it 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 follow the particular syntax like the predicate followed by the terms and the, your terms can be a function and the function can be your constant or the variables <clears throat> now this substitution uh, in it's it's a part of the different kind of inferences rule that we are going to discuss in the fol so and uh, it is uh, this particular what you can say the terminology we are going to utilize uh, while we are going to discuss the rules of the inference uh, using the quantifiers in case of the fol now simply if you write the <coughs> if you write the particular expression like this or the this is the function f of a by x now what is its meaning f of a by x it simply means that substitute a constant a in place of x that is the simply meaning of this and that is nothing but the substitution correct if i have a function like this f of a by x then its meaning is what substitute the constant a on the place of the variable x that is simply the meaning of this particular function which indicate the substitution terminology understood this one yes sir yes sir because this we are going to required when we are going to see the next concept like the <coughs> unification and the resolution part that is the most important part in case of the fol so that is nothing but the substitution which is simply meaning substituting some constant on the place of the some variables okay that is the substitution then the equality okay as in case of the fol we just not uh, use the predicates and the terms for making the atomic sentences but also we use the uh, equality terminology also and uh, for this we use the equality symbol like this okay this is nothing but the equality symbol correct in case of the fol we have the equality symbol like this okay now for example if you have the logic like this now from which particular sentence this logic must have written yes john is brother of smith exactly john is the brother of smith now here this particular this particular symbol is nothing but our equality got the point yes sir understood now this can be written in another way also still its meaning will remain same another way means on the place of john we can write the smith and john can be written here yes or no yes sir yes still its meaning remain the same okay and this is nothing but the called as a equality operator or equality uh, property okay i am getting the noise from somebody yes okay so this is the second terminology <clears throat> that is the equality okay which is being uh, i have we have seen here if you want to uh, show something uh, which are similar okay then it can be shown like this as you can see in this example with this kind of particular symbol okay that is equal to so as in the above example we can see the object refer by the brother john is similar to the object refer by the smith now if you want to uh, utilize it to show the some particular negative things okay then equality symbol can be also used with the negation okay that represent that two terms are not the same object for example if you have written like this negation of x comma y this can be also written using the equality uh, the equ equality operator with the negation and this is being written like this both of these things are the similar negation of x equal to y is similar to the x not equal to y understood yes sir so we can use the equality to show the some uh, what you can say uh, particular this similar part also and we can also utilize negation uh, we can also utilize the equality to show the some particular part which contain the negations also okay 
now let's come to the our main point that is nothing but the uh, inference rule in case of the fol for the different kinds of quantifiers okay as in case of the proposition logic we have the inference rule in the similar way we have the inference rule in the fol now these are the four inference rules which we are to, which we are going to discuss in case of the fol now these inference rule are very much important in order to discuss the further part which is no number of times being asked in the exam the our next uh, part is nothing but the unification unification algorithms and the resolution okay these are the most important part remaining in this chapter in this unit and now we have the inference rule like the universal generalization then the universal institution which is which is also called as the universal elimination also there is another word for the universal institution uh, institution that is the universal elimination third we have the existential introduction which is also called as the existential generalization also and last one we have existential institution which is also called as the existential institution or existential elimination also now let's see it uh, one by one with example so that we can get the clear concept now here first one we have the universal generalization okay what we have the first one that is the universal generalization let's understand the technical uh, point for this and then we see the example a universal generalization is the valid reference rule or valid the inference valid inference rule which state that if the premise p in bracket c is true for any arbitrary element c in the universe of the discourse then we can have the conclusion as all x px now what exactly this means let's see what is being written here if we have the valid inference rule which state that premises p of c now what is this p and what is this c now p is nothing but the for the premise or the p is here for the property c is what c is anything c is any arbitrary element here i have written c is what any arbitrary element arbitrary element in the sense c is the any uh, random object which is present in the universe of the discourse universe of the discourse in the sense what what do you mean by the universe of discourse yes universe of discourse so meaning kai yes last time i have shown you the example that uh, all cats are what all cat drinks milk there i have shown the set of all cats in the world like this yes in the previous lecture so this this particular set is nothing but the universe of discourse or we can simply consider the universe of discourse is nothing but some something which is present in the universe or something which is present in the world getting the point sir yes sir universe of discourse simply consider it is a it is a kind of it is a general world or universe understood now what is being written here inference rule we state that if there is a premise pc is true for any arbitrary element c in the universe of discourse e element c or object c is the any arbitrary element in this world understood then now if it is true then from that from if this premise is true for this object c then from that we can have this conclusion now what is this conclusion how we will read this all x premise 6 x all x premise x jar he true asel kay if this premise p of c is true for any arbitrary element in the universe of discourse p p of c is true for any arbitrary element c in this world okay then from these we can and if it is true from this we can have the conclusion all x of px 
now this particular the, this particular definition of the universal generalization is being written like this now what exactly mean by this let's understand okay suppose let's see as i said here for a universal generalization is a value inference rule which said that if there is a premise p of c now we consider the premise premise c the p of c is what this statement what statement a byte contain the eight bits all of you can able to see this yes sir a byte contain the eight bits this is what p of c premises of c now if it is true if it is true then from that we can have this if it is true from that we can have a conclusion like this now what what do you mean by this ata here yes sentence varun can you tell me the sentence which will from this what all byte contain eight bit now premise of c is what a byte contain the eight bits correct mm. now from yes, these the yeah. inference can be made like these all I, all x of px means what from this we can reach to the conclusion all byte contain the eight bits it is also true yes, yes or no yes sir yes sir if single byte contain the eight bits then all bytes can also contain the eight bits yes sir understood so this, that is nothing but this rule of the universal generalization got the point yes sir now what we are trying to say using this rule what we are trying to say using this rule can anybody tell me what we are trying to say from this rule now this rule simply saying is what this rule state that or using this what we want to say every element has a similar property yes or no yes sir if a byte contain the 8 bits then whatever number of bytes in this world in the universe of discourse correct yes sir whatever number of bytes in this universe of discourse then each of these byte also contain the 8 bits that is the we are trying to say using this rule getting the point yes sir understood the universal disc, uh, universal generalization rule yes sir okay so let's see the next one that is the universal instantiation or which is being also referred as universal instantiation is also referred as universal elimination and it is the valid inference rule let's see how it is valid okay now what it rule state that just that we understand first this universal instantiation rule state that we can infer any sentence premises of c what we can infer we can infer any sentence premises of c by substituting a ground term c from all x px for any object in the universe of discourse now simply meaning of this rule is nothing but the inverse of our previous rule in the previous rule what we have done in the previous rule what we have done yes in the universal generalization what we have done from this kind of things which is given as a true we have obtained these things in short yes sir correct same thing we have done now if the premise of c is given like this then from this we have obtained this and this sentence correct yes sir means from this this prim, from this given from this given premises of c from this given premises of c we have obtained this part correct so that is why it is being represented like this now 
its next part next rule inference rule that is the universal instantiation which is also referred as the universal elimination now what it is why it is being called as the universal elimination we will see that first understood the what exactly rule is now here what we are doing we have given this if it is true then from that we are going to obtain this getting now yes yes sir what we have given let's see now universal institution rule state that we can infer any sentence we can infer in the sense what we can make the inference we can make the conclusion for any sentence pc pc in the sense p of c in the sense premises of c by substituting a ground term c from all x px for any object in the universe of discussion in the universe of discourse and this is being written like this means what if you have given this particular this particular sentence as a true for example let's see this is means this means what for example i write the sentence like this every person likes ice cream that is nothing but the this part yes or no yes, yes sir. sir every person like the ice cream i just write it in the form of the premise okay for every this part person this part if this is if this is part given if this is given like this statement we have given every person like the ice cream now from this we can do the inference from this we can infer that we can infer this part now this particular part with the help of our actual logic can be written like this yes or no see here हे रिप्रेजेंटेशन आपण असं लिहू शकतो की नाही yes, काय एव्हरी पर्सन लाईक द आईस्क्रीम फॉर ऑल एक्स फॉर फॉर ऑल एक्स इज अ पर्सन देन एक्स लाईक द आईस्क्रीम करेक्ट येस सर हेच फक्त आपण जनरल हेच फक्त आपण एक जनरलाइज फॉर्म मध्ये लिहितो बट इट्स ऍक्च्युअल लॉजिक फॉर धीस सेंटेन्स कॅन बी रिटर्न लाईक धीस करेक्ट नाव फ्रॉम धीस वॉट इन्फरन्स वी कॅन मेड युझिंग धीस रूल ऑफ universal instantiation now from this rule according to the rule of universal elimination if we have given this kind of logic from this we can do the inference what kind of inference we can do that inference is nothing but like this now you just tell me from this given inference from this given from this given particular from this given part we can infer this part yes sir from this give from this information can we infer this part according to this our rule of the universal instantiation or rule of the universal elimination now what difference you are observing in this part and this part there are all person and here is a john ani khali fakt john only john john fakt john kasha cha jage lila apan for on the place of what we have substitute the john x x x x x that is that is the one difference x. another difference is what it is universal use kele sir khali universal it is universal use kele it khali universal nahi tar mag that is nothing but our rule of the universal instantiation we sort which is also referred as the universal elimination एलिमिनेट म्हणजे आपण इथं काय इलिमिनेट करतोय युनिव्हर्सल युनिव्हर्सल आपण इलिमिनेट करतोय नाव यू माइट बी आस्किंग फॉर व्हॉट पर्पोज इट इज रिक्वायर्ड नाव दिस इज रिक्वायर्ड इन द रिझॉल्युशन कन्सेप्ट दिस दिस पर्टिक्युलर पार्ट वी आर गोइंग टू रिफर इन द कन्सेप्ट ऑफ व्हॉट रिझॉल्युशन नाव व्हॉट ऍक्च्युअली मीन बाय द रिझॉल्युशन दॅट विल सी वेन वी सी दॅट टॉपिक यू आर गेटिंग द पॉइंट यू जस्ट अंडरस्टूड व्हॉट एक्झॅक्टली दिस इन्फ्लुअन्स रूल्स आर understood so this rule of the universal institution or rule of the universal elimination says that from from given this particular kind of things 
or logic we can infer this particular sentence correct yes sir same thing i have written the rule of the in universal instruction state that we can infer any sentence like premises of c how by substituting a ground general term now what is the ground general term here what substitution we have done universal substitution what ground general term we have utilized here universal institution says that we can p of, c, p of c here here from these we have got this according to this rule yes, yes sir what i am asking what ground general term we have utilized here as rule in the rule what is being said rule c said what universal institution rule state that we can infer any sentence premises of c by substituting a ground general term it upon in order to in order in order to get these from these have you done any kind of substitution no no substitution done आपण या या सेंटेंस वरून हे सेंटेंस वी हॅव गॉट तर हे इन ऑर टू इन ऑर टू गेट दॅट वेदर वी हॅव परफॉर्म एनी काइंड ऑफ सबस्टिट्यूशन ऑर नॉट आपण एक्स च्या जागी जॉन ला घेतले सर दॅट इज आई एम आस्किंग ना वी हॅव परफॉर्म द सबस्टिट्यूशन यस सर एंड दॅट इज नथिंग बट दॅट दॅट पर्टिक्युलर दिस इज बीइंग रेफर्ड एज अ सबस्टिट्यूटिंग अ ग्राउंड टर्म understood universal state that we can we can infer any sentence premises of c by substituting any ground term c any ground term c means it is not like it is not like the john you should write you can write anything on the place of john which which will be replacing this x getting the point yes sir understood and here you can infer any sentence premises by substituting a ground term c from all x of px for any object in the universe of discuss this part we have given and from that this part we have infer this part by substituting any ground general term or by substituting here on the place of x we have substitute the john you can you can substitute any any name that you want understood and this is nothing but the rule of the universal elimination or the rule of the universal institution where when you are applying this rule the statement you will get from this it should be by eliminating these universal quantifier yes or no yes okay so this is the second inference rule that is the universal institution and the universal elimination now another example related with this we have as you know universal institution or the universal elimination rule is represented like this which indicate if this is if this is given if this information is given from that we can obtain this information or from if this information is given from this we can infer this information let's see the another example for example i have a statement all kings who are greedy are evil what all kings who are greedy are evil now what will be the fol for this sentence fol will be what first order logic for this sentence will be first we have to start with what all all for all i have written the all x universal universal quantifier we have to utilize all kings that's why the king x king who x. are who are greedy that's why i written here and greedy x all kings who are greedy are evil means it is inimical related to the universal institution or universal elimination for for example now universal institution rules is being represented like this which simply means what if this information is given all x of px now from that we can obtain this information 
okay premier size of c where c is the any any arbitrary element of this world now for example we are given the sentence like this all of you can able to see the sentence yes sir what is the sentence all kings who are greedy are evil now what will be the fol for this universal quantifier x universal quantifier x then kings king. king for all x. x if x is a king correct hmm for all x if x is a king then that yes. that king is greedy yes that's why and greedy x greedy kon hai king manun x manun greedy cha in front of the greedy in bracket x correct Yes, sir. All kings who are greedy are evil. Means which is implying something. Yes, sir. J king, I think greedy. I think that all kings who are greedy are evil. So that's why implication. When you are writing the universal quantifier, what we have to utilize implication. All kings who are greedy are evil. Who are evil? Kings. 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 So x is for the king. So for L, for all x, if x is a king, and x and king is greedy, that's why x greedy. Then it implies that he is evil also. Okay. Now this is the FOL. Now how it can be how it can be converted or from this from this information how we can obtain the information or how we can infer the another information according to the rule of the universal institution or according to the rule of the universal elimination what we have to do according to the this rule now from this uh, replace the x with any name yes replace the x with any name remove and second thing remove the remove the universal, universal, universal quantity universal. Universal. so same i have king john John and greedy John, evil John. अतः इतना अपन मुझे this meaning is what we have infer that king can be a John can also be king. Correct? Yes or no? Yes sir. Yes sir. In the similar way, you can write in another way also. King. We are here. We are inferring that Richard is the king. He is greedy, and that's why he is the evil. Understood? Yes sir. Yes sir. So this is nothing but the rule of the universal institution in case of the. Uh, uh what we are discussing the inference rule of the quantifier now let's see the third one existential introduction or which is also called as existential generalization upon first rule kutla bagitla hota which first rule we have studied first rule of the inference universal generalization universal generalization now it is simply what existential generalization which is also the valid inference rule case in case of the fol now what exactly it was what exactly uh, it states see this rule state that if there is a some element c in the universe of discourse what if there is a some element c in the universe of discourse which has a property p then from that we can infer that there exist something in the universe which has the property p what if there is a some element some element in the sense what single element yes or no yes sir in the universe of discourse which has a property p or which has a premises of p then from that we can infer there exist something in the universe which has the property p means what like c there can be a more something in the world which has the property p is this the meaning it is representing yes or no yes sir now same thing we have written means if this is being given if this information is given this information is nothing but the meaning of our this part which which part this part this this rule said that if there is a some element c in the inverse of discourse which has a property c it is being written like this getting now his definition yes, apan idai ek logical form madhe lile if there is a some element c in the inverse of discourse 
which has a property p this is being written like this p of c correct yes sir then from that we can infer that there exists something in the inverse of from that we can infer that there is there exists something in the inverse of discourse there exists something in the inverse of discourse can be written like this existential quantifier of yes, which has the property p which is being written fully like this there exists something in the inverse of in the inverse which has the property p means what from this we can obtain this that is the meaning of this correct yes sir let's say the example what exactly it means for example i write the we have the sentence priyanka got good marks in english what priyanka got good marks in the english is our p of c yes or no yes sir apan logical yacha madhe lihla nahi the fakt as a general statement lihla you can write in the logical form also this is our p of c which is what is that priyanka got good marks in english now according to this existential existential generalization or existential introduction from this what sentence we can get someone got good mark in someone english someone got good marks in the english and that is nothing but this yes sir yes so that is nothing but our third rule of uh, inference that is the existential introduction understood existential introduction in simply means we are we are utilizing the symbol of existential quantifier yes or no yes sir and existence and now uh, or the uh, now next is our existential elimination or existential institution sees last rule is what existential institution now this existential institution is also called as existential elimination which is the valid inference rule in the fol now let's see what exactly this rule says now this rule state that we can infer p of c from the formula given in the form of all of x of p of x for any new constant symbol c ata previous yacha madhe aplo kay kele hota from in the previous example what we have it is it is just the inverse of our previous If, yes sir correct if this is being mm. this is being given then okay, we this form the from that we get sir. this yes sir simple me so now let's see the it with the example now let's see the example here simple example we have taken now this uh, existential elimination is represented like this okay now suppose here i have the example statement written like this there is at least one crown on the head of john this is statement general statement given ata yacha sathi fol apan kasa liu shakto there is at least at least ala manje kutla quantifier use kara lagal apala existent existential so can i write like this for some x if x is a crown and that crown is on the head of john x comma john. john on head correct yes sir now from this part what we will get according to the rule of the existential elimination or the existential institution what we can infer from this yes according to this what it says if this is being given if this information is given we can obtain this information now for yes. example here we have taken this is this part is nothing but is being represented like this this statement correct and this statement using the fol you can write like this also now according to the existential institution or according to the existential elimination what we can infer what will be the inference of this statement or this statement existential elimination means what we have to do remove existential quantifier remove the existential quantifier same na je apan 
युनिवर्सल इलिमिनेशन कि युनिवर्सल इन्स्टिट्यूशन मध्य बगितर फिर सीम्बॉल इज डिफरंट करेक्ट और नॉट सो फ्रॉम दिस यू कैन सी हियर फॉर दिस पर्टिक्युलर गिवन लॉजिक we can infer the logic from these according to the rule of existential institution like this yes or no yes sir what changes you are observing there remove the existent quantifier remove the existential quantifier that is the first yes, then x is replaced we replace the x to k yes means what here here you can see on the place of x here we have written the k k here also k means it says that it says that when you are doing the existential institution or the uh, our first universal ex, uh, universal institution which is also called as the universal elimination you, we yes. cannot we cannot use the we cannot use the same variable in the different logic that we are utilizing you you are getting the point yes. you cannot use yes. the same symbol or same variable understood and that is we are doing here now this part this part we are going to refer when we are going to study the concept of the resolution the same thing we are doing here that is the existential institution we are removing the this this particular existential quantifier and this part, if there is some variable there this variable we are replacing with some another variable understood yes sir okay now so this particular variable we are introduce here this k variable this is also called as a coulomb constant now because understood so above k is a constant symbol which is called as a coulomb constant केस यूज केला पाहिजे असं आहे का नाही यू कॅन युटिलाइज द एनीथिंग ओके कीप दिस थिंग इन माइंड यू कॅन यूज द एनी सिंबॉल बट इट शुड बी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द एक्स यस इट शुड बी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द एक्स सेम इन केस ऑफ द ऑल द रूल्स वी हैव स्टडीड अंडरस्टूड सो दिस इज नथिंग बट आवर रूल ऑफ द इन्फरेंस ऑफ द क्वांटिफायर ओके नाउ दिस वी आर गोइंग टू रिक्वायर टू स्टडी द फर्दर कांसेप्ट अंडरस्टूड ऑल ऑफ यू दिस Yes, sir. Okay, yes, so sir. next time we will continue with the next part, that is the unification and the uh, resolution part. Okay, thank you all of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.